in the sky, going high. Gunko Joe is going low. Hey guys, hello gorgeous. Welcome back to another cartoon commentary. I am your host, Michael Mercy. If you're listening along to the G.I. Joeberg podcast on iTunes or Podbean, you can find my channel on YouTube under Michael Mercy. All sorts of reviews on there, 360 swag reviews for new and vintage toys and collectibles, movie, TV, and book reviews. So check it out and join the nerd tribe. For this fourth installment of cartoon commentary, I'm once again joined by the gentleman from G.I. Joeberg, Paul. Hey guys. And Robert. Good to be here. And Steven. Yo, Joe. Thanks Hello, again. everybody. <laughs> Thanks again, guys, for joining me. We are on episode four of the Real American Hero miniseries. So cue up your DVD menus. Get that blue dot beside Duel in the Devil's Cauldron. Last episode, we had Death in the title. This time we have Devil. Shows you how risque and extreme the old G.I. Joe cartoon was. Gonna give you a countdown. It's gonna be three, two, one, go, and on go, you'll press play. Everybody ready? Ready. Ready. Let's do it. All right, three, two, one, go. Duel in the Devil's Cauldron. Love these titles. And Duke is in your face. Big time. Stalker with the jump back, uh, backpack there, even though he didn't come with the jump that was uh did, did the jump come by itself as well as with grand slam hmm i believe it was released initially with the so no it was it, was, it was, came it, it came by itself and flash it came by itself on, on initially the box, and right? then yeah hmm. but then it was re-released with with grand silver slam. pads grand slam yep in the background there, during that little training physical exercise, Gung-Ho is in the back doing a bench press, not wearing his uh, vest or his hat. It's always better to do bench presses without a hat on. Well, it makes, it's kind of strange. Like, why would he be working out not in his action figure outfit? You know, it, the point was to sell toys, but it seems like a lot of the time they, they do what's practical more than what will sell more toys. Even though the clothes well, he's removed. definitely wearing his his action figure outfit when he <laughs> takes Steeler out big yeah. time. <laughs> that is one brutal fly kick that he does. Are with these a roundhouse, in a circular. whatever that is, jumping mm. in the circular? Very good. We've got our recap here of everything that's happened up to this point. Quite an extensive recap, actually. Yeah, they have a lot of she ground was, cover. Imagine you could if just they jump just jump in in episode three, <laughs> you wouldn't have missed a beat. Yeah, imagine if they did this every episode, like 100 episodes in so far on GI Joe, and recapped every episode up to date. So for some reason, Timber is uh, immune to the effects of this gas, or not affected as much. And well, he wasn't affected by radiation, so I, I'll give it to him. Right. Super pooch. I, I hope that's water. Not yeah, <laughs> formaldehyde or can you imagine if it was chloroform? It's like, hi, does this smell like chloroform? <laughs> what? What? There's another wolf? <laughs> There's another wolf. A little <laughs> animation <laughs> there. <laughs> Oops. You gotta love oh, those. green shirts. If yeah. we can assume they're even Joes at all. I don't think. Just random security guys. Yeah, I don't think they're green shirts. Hmm. Uh, cover goal, you beauty. So heavy water is used in nuclear reactors. And the uh, Nazis were ap apparently using heavy water to um, experiment with nuclear weapons. Eh, just a little bit of history there, fellas. Yeah, it's a real thing. Like a lot mm -hmm. of things in G.I. Joe. A lot of things aren't real, but heavy water and... I don't know if the crystals were real. I like that <laughs> Gung Ho has got uh, a sort of personal relationship with his rifle. It's a very Marine Corps thing. Even this though is my rifle, there it, are many like it, but this one is mine. <laughs> but even though it's just a typical, standard, regular, one of a million GI Joe laser rifle, it'd be I different if it was. Roadblock. I, I wish it was. Um, it existed. Me, 
I wish they had made it Gung Ho's rocket launcher that he came with. The the one that the figure actually came with. The grenade launcher. Oh, the grenade launcher. Yeah, Mm. the grenade launcher. That would have. Although Rob makes a good point. There's no roadblock in this, but Gung Ho Gung Ho does fulfill a lot of roadblocks sort of quirks, or he does use a lot of roadblocks quirks. He rhymes, and he's you know he's very buddy buddy like. He's a heavy, so and he's Mm. literally heavy. It's all muscle, (laughs) and he's voiced by Chris Lotta. Which shows you the uh, talent range of the late great Chris Lotta. Wow. Oh, Mike, uh, something I'd like to do a callback to in a previous episode. You asked which of the Joes came with uh, German weapons. Well, the clearest example I can think of is Rock and Roll version one. He has that heavy German MG, World War II German gun. Yeah, that was a comment I, I noticed. Um, I read there that somewhere, Joe Battlelines or his tank, somewhere, someone mentioned the irony of the real American hero having old German weaponry. And uh, I, I never. Conrad Hauser. I'm not, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not a weapons expert, so I'd never realized that Rock and Roll's gun is a German machine gun. I just assumed they were all American weaponry, but uh, who knows why they decided to include the particular weapons that they did with those figures. Maybe did they were just anyone remotes. ever think that GI Joe had that many sky strikers, troops and tanks. How is he high. eating? Oh. He's eating. I don't know. Is he <laughs> sticking know. it under his mask? There is an, a later episode where Cobra commander takes off his mask to eat and he, someone's repulsed by it. It might be Destro, but he, there's a bite out of it and he's wearing <laughs> his mask. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Cobra Commander tantrum. <laughs> Gotta love it. Mm, ever the voice of yeah. reason, Destro. Now, but he'll get his. Now, Destro is Scottish, right? Uh, not according to this accent, but yes, historically, he's the a, character I, I is should say Scotsman. He's, he's supposed to be Scottish, but yeah, this <laughs> accent is a different dialect. I like it, though. I certainly like to make my Destro action figure speak like this guy. Mm. <laughs> oh, one of the few times Stalker gets some air time, screen time, mm. and they cut him off. And they put him, he, he seems to uh, be fulfilling quite a, a high tier leadership role. Like he's, he's on a higher pay grade. Yeah, I always imagine Stalker being in Flint's position, uh, a second in command type of rank. <laughs> but then he disappears so quickly. Yeah, that really sucks. He's a great character, and I think basically uh, Beachhead by the le- the last season of the Sunbow Run, Beachhead basically took Stalker's position as like the the ranger, the mission small mission leader, the trainer. Mm. Yeah, and no, Beachhead became quite important, more important than say the file card gives him credit. The second Stalker figure, though, is one of the coolest in terms of redone figures. The uh, Arctic, oh, totally. ver- Arctic version with a canoe. So there's a mecha design that's borrowed from a series called uh, Armored Battler Dogram, if anybody's interested. Oh, cool. It's not like, it's just it takes a lot of the notes from those designs. Is it a Sunbow series? No, no, it's a, a Japanese series. I think it's done by... <laughs> I'm not actually sure who does it, <laughs> but uh, it's a Japanese, it's an anime, yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Gung Ho is fouling up the works here. <laughs> That's it gets great. very meta because the scaling of that Wolverine is yeah. pretty accurate to the scaling of the toy. Yeah. Uh, I like those little fun moments in the show where it just doesn't take itself. It's interesting, Duke is just saying about taking seriously and the show is not taking itself seriously. I love this dialogue. It's so real. It just feels so, you know, military brotherhood and sisterhood. Hmm. It's often the smaller moments of dialogue that make the series feel, feel more real than, than the overall arching kind of like plot. Or, you know, the yeah, they always have a moment to joke. No matter how dire the situation, there's always a moment to have a glib little uh, wisecrack. And this is before... The age of wisecracks in movies like uh, Die Hard, 
um, hmm. Predator, stuff like that. This is well before that. But uh, the wisecracks in this show are great. Expanded dragonflies to make yes. them troop transports. I'm in favor. Yeah, with with the dragonflies feature or with the dragonfly play feature. Yeah, they're huge. They're like uh, Blackhawks. Scarlet mm, checking her huge. email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that whole thing that she's working on today, an iPod can do all that. An iPhone. I love Wild Bill. He's just nuts. Yeah, he's he's always been constant. Um, and he's always been a fun character. He used to irritate me when I was a kid. I used to find him to be too cowboy, but I... In the Sunbow, in the Sunbow cartoon, he's actually pretty high up there in rank. Um, yeah, which I was surprised. I thought, why would you make this guy one of the leaders? He's nuts. <laughs> this is an exciting scene right here, even though it's not really that visually a dynamic scene, other than the lava. Um, but they do have a you know really tough time here, and now they're about to come under attack. And commercial break. I always mm. knew when to cut to commercial. Yeah, after introducing the prototype Rattlers. It's cool seeing all of these um, precursor vehicles that haven't been released yet. I wonder what kind of uh, material the animators were working off of. Was it just a concept? It was like, yeah, we're going to have this um, ground attack craft that has a tilt wing so the engines can go VTOL. (laughs) And it's a Cobra vehicle and it's in like a dark gray or maybe a purple... Yeah. Clutch just about to fall to his death into burning lava. Let's hear it for big feet. (laughs) (laughs) Are they carrying the giant dude away? Jeez. I don't know, but that Cobra officer at the back or Cobra trooper at the back is definitely using his hips <laughs> oh duke duke was able to pick him up and throw him by one foot so it's possible that the mind control bands <laughs> augment strength so and if a trooper is carrying something heavy he might be wearing one i don't know i love cover commander's tantrums <laughs> <laughs> he kicks that computer so hard <laughs> And he's still standing in front of the models, even though everybody knows they're models. They're well made. Or or was the cu- transmission cut before Gung Ho came in? It was cut. I think it was oh, cut okay. before he came in, yeah. Right. So Cobra has no capability of finding out that it's all a ruse, like looking at the stuff. It's very pretty looking mm. with the sparkles there and also the glowing bubbles in the heavy water. It's really nice animation. It's uh, something that they used to do a lot on um, a filmation animated show called Brave Star. That one was mm. famous for a lot of uh, glowing things. And it it's very hard to do glowing in animation oh, the- back, back then. You had to do like many levels and different layers of photography in order to make something look like it was glowing. Oh yeah, for the carrium and stuff, yeah. yeah. They do that process where they put like foil and they have to light it up and it's crazy. And especially for Tex Hex's boss, Stampede, with the glowing smoke coming out of his nostrils. Here's some... Uh, <laughs> the end is nice. Peter Cullen once again with his very distinctive Optimus Prime voice. It's curtains! Oh, there Cartoon we go. Logic. <laughs> if you throw water on the computer, it will explode. <laughs> yeah. They're still not waterproof. You'd think after all these years, they would have figured that I don't out. Know, it looked pretty uh, pretty formidable, that computer. Maybe it was, was heavy water. Throwing... <laughs> yeah. It was heavy water. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Toilet water. <laughs> Isn't <laughs> that the same thing? <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, got the wanton again. property destruction. And he is like mad now. Oh, we got Ace. Quite like that look. Yeah, Maybe. it's a shame that the figure never looked like that. Or or like mm -hmm. later on, they, they didn't even release a 25th or club version of Animation Ace. It's too bad. And there's <laughs> Peter calling as Airborne. Yeah, in a dragonfly with no skids. <laughs> the psychic Airborne, if you remember that later episode. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was a few silly ones. No there we go. No one's denying that. <laughs> There's Gung Ho's roadblock style line. Yeah. The action on this miniseries is pretty well handled. Mm -hmm. It's not like Cobra's on the one side, Joe's on the other side, red and blue lasers. It's We've got vehicular action and it's clever vehicular action. There's a lot going on too. This is just, I think, the same year that Return of the Jedi came out, which was famous for the the crazy space battle going on at the end where tons of stuff was happening at the same time yeah lots of mm, cross here we've got cross choppers versus jets, jets versus uh ground attack hey. craft and we've got this thing the helicarrier design love it yeah do we ever see this thing again it crashes yeah, into the do. flag we we do see it uh. again and then it's also cribbed for the arcade game. The arcade game, it also makes a big appearance there. Yep. It's the last level. No, I love it. And it's also in the opening for the... <laughs> That's right, the intro. It's, yeah, the Later intro. On. It's in the intro for the movie, yeah. As well, so... Football reference. Oh, oh Duke is not wearing a helmet in the Sky Striker. <laughs> That's not safe. I just want to say, Cobra's got a much better plan here. It's just, I'm just saying. They're going to catch it with the net. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Wait. Intercept. <laughs> <laughs> the Sky Strikers. Oh, that's amazing. Well, oh. who, who could have predicted that wouldn't work? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. They actually made it easier for Cobra. Yeah, they softened the blow. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Joe just can't seem to catch a break these uh, first four episodes now. Oh, he's going to put on the auto. Oh, I love this. He's standing, Ho. he's standing up in the, oh, at the supersized dragonfly, right? I just love mm -hmm. this because they're just going to jump out of it. They're like, they don't care. Taxpayers' dollars working. That's, that's right. Yeah, it's on autopilot. It'll find its way safely back to base. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. That's what They'll probably rescue them. Ah, uh, this interior. Oof, wow. <laughs> that's such a star trek thing destro really is the field general in in this first miniseries there's cobra commander just throws his little hissy fits from home base it's destro going out and doing all the footwork the internal design of this thing is so well worked through mm. you got these tubes wait that didn't make any sense they seem to be running out of the tube before it had lifted them up onto the deck <laughs> <laughs> we can assume it uh, that it carried them during the cut. I suppose. Cobra Flax. What? what? Co <laughs> yep, Cobra Flax. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Random. Why not? Oh, this this is great. Punch. Oh, oh punch. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Bitch slap. <laughs> Backhand. <-ish. laughs> yeah, it's great. It didn't seem like he even wound up for that. I mean, yeah, he was just like, like poof. He's obelix. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's like, uh, it reminds me of true, uh, of Lost Action Hero. This is for blowing up my wife's house. Yeah, <laughs> my ex-wife's house. You know, that little slap from Arnold. Oh, <laughs> he left oh. Timber. No, he didn't. Oh, my goodness. She <laughs> <laughs> was. Wow. I don't know if I agree with that, and neither would Peter. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least it's not forcing a dog to go into uh, rough waters. Yeah, that's that's alleged, though. <laughs> no, oh well, video added evidence, right? The yeah, because that video is heavily edited. Yeah, but we'll see. Uh, There's a I, timber pulling a a ghost from Game of Thrones. Yes, making himself useful. And these little vehicles, I love these. What these are, are so cool. Don't, don't they seem like proto claws? They, yeah, you they know, look like the jetpack. 
if you mount the pilot on the top of the claw as opposed to underneath. That's what I was going to say. It looks like a claw. Mm. There's our machine gun fire and laser fire. Yep. So a distinction between the weapons, which is pretty cool. Scarlet with the the crossbow. The, the exploding crossbow. <laughs> well, <laughs> if they had them on Dukes of Hazard, why can't they have them on G.I. Joe? Oh, like a girl. Like, <laughs> Sorry, to be fair, she's running like a movie girl. Yeah. Not a real girl. But, she, but she's so capable, though. It's like, why animated running differently? I love how they just don't show you how they got him. <laughs> he died. <laughs> he was he was dismembered. <laughs> he was like four half troopers. <laughs> well, it's cool that even though Cobra was completely uh, routed, um, Destro still is able to salvage a small victory out of this whole situation. This is quite tense. I love this this whole situation here. Yeah, rare quiet moment. Mm. He's quiet. He's, did like he get the Ir- cat. did he get the Arashikage training too? Uh, allegedly. <laughs> oh crap! There goes something. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> what was Scarlet's that? thermal arrow? Thermal I mean, arrow. she's a regular Hawkeye or why was Green she, Arrow. Why was she hunting Destro with that? Hmm. Because it would melt beryllium steel. I guess I don't know. <laughs> Destra seems to have commandeered her weapon, which is perhaps not the most practical weapon and had time to, to hold re- a hostage. Had time to reload it? Where did well, you the find the arrow? need only grab the, um, the arrow, stop it from, from firing. Yeah, so now Scarlet is the damsel in distress. Well, which is fine that- because Duke has already played that role. <laughs> well, there's that, but also if that arrow discharges, they're both dead anyway, so... yeah. <laughs> Wow, fa- say that five times faster. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Michael Bell, he's nice good. Nice one, Michael Bell. He's one of the best. Uh-oh. <laughs> There's a handy chain-up point for hostages. Yeah. Very seductively posed there, Scarlet. Nice. Um, for the record, the, the opinions of Stephen are Stevens and Stevens alone. <laughs> um, not, hey, it's the, not nice. I'm not endorsing chaining women up. And <laughs> it's it's Amber unless Palpatine's, they ask for it. <laughs> uh, that's a whole other thing. <laughs> That'll be for our He-Man commentary. <laughs> uh, and cliffhanger, another cliffhanger. Are they going to die? Probably not. Well, they're going to tell us now, aren't they? In, in the previous yeah, it's kind of funny. Episode. It's right. <laughs> yes. And ever since wow. um, it was mentioned, how does Scarlet tie her hair back? Now, every time I see her hair, I wonder, how is she doing that? The ponytail without actually anything holding it, like a band or... Mm. <laughs> it's glue. It's glue. glue. There's a super... <laughs> uh, snake armor. Super snake armor. I would actually go for those. Like, I could see that making sense. Wow, we're going to see a lot of stuff in this uh, upcoming episode that I'm very excited about. Well, it's the f- well, it is the finale. Yeah, it's yes. the finale. <laughs> so it's uh, the culmination of the G.I. Joe Real American Hero miniseries. Let's get some final closing thoughts. Paul, let's start with you. Uh, okay, so I- I'm going to say that uh, like a lot happens, but not a lot happens in this episode. I think this episode had a lot to do with uh, combat and uh, you know just getting some some of the conflict out of the way the sort of uh, the easy uh, instant gratification kind of you know moments uh, because to be fair this uh, this miniseries could have ended on this episode uh, they could have tied it up you know and we've seen them do it before well we will see them do it after this um, I enjoyed it I think the uh, just not as much as the others and I really love the introduction of the Cobra Helicarrier that is one of those, once again, you can hear me say this a lot, but that's another toy I wish Hasbro had done uh, that we never got. And I'm pretty sure that they conceptualized it. What's, so. what's stopping you from customizing a USS flag into a helicarrier? 
oh, well, we're getting a U.S. flag. For starters. <laughs> That's stopping a lot of people. Uh, Robert, closing thoughts. This episode was pretty awesome in that it had such a great variety of action. And also we got a lot of vehicle fighting, which I thought was pretty cool. I mean, the start was a bit funny with, with Timber. <laughs> <laughs> but, but overall, it, it was pretty cool. Mm. Steven, how about you? I'm just going to echo my uh, two countrymen, really. Uh, I'm an unshamed vehicle fan over the figures. The figures are necessary, but it was always the vehicles that really fired my imagination. And to see, you know, an action sequence with rattlers or prototype rattlers and dragonflies and sky strikers, and then all culminating on this cobra heli carrier using the jumps to to uh, land on the deck and then pushing cobra back and eventually commandeering their own ship uh forcing destro into um, an escape uh, with a hostage i mean the action was well plotted in this episode and it was intelligent in a sense that as i mentioned earlier you didn't just have cobra on one side firing blue lasers G.I. Joe on the other side, firing red lasers, and this kind of almost stalemated style of action. This action had motion, and it, it had a, an end point um, and an escalation, which made it entertaining to watch. And there really didn't have to be much else going on in this episode outside of that to entertain me. But you had Stalker and his little ruse, which is uh, wonderful. And the scripting was good and lighthearted. There were some <laughs> American football references, which clearly sailed over my head as a South African boy. But uh, all good fun. And once again, the writing doesn't seem tired. All of these concepts are being presented for the first time. We haven't fallen into the rut of, ooh, there are five things to get from five different corners of the globe. Uh, there's a nice variation of those themes. And it's all in mm. the very first miniseries. Mm -hmm. I, I only wished things had stayed as original as this instead of trying to rehash Mass Device over and over again. So this first miniseries really is a high watermark for me. There's quite a major plot point made about how to locate Cobra's lair in the next episode. But wouldn't Destro have flown straight there? G.I. Joe had Sky Strikers in the air at the time. Couldn't they have followed him? Uh, yeah. Well, they were heartbroken. <laughs> they, they lost Scarlet, and you would think it would make sense to follow um, and try to get her back, but, you know, when you're heartbroken, you, you need to go home and lick your wounds for a little bit and come up with a new strategy, I guess. I don't know. We're getting back into that, <laughs> you know. Kind Maybe of there was a threat between the scenes that, you know, if you follow me, I'm going to throw Scarlet out of this aircraft. Uh, possibly. Yeah, hmm. like don't, don't but stress. But also the aircraft was crashing, surely? I guess we'll yeah, find so out. They should have followed them down. Yeah. Anyway, I, I don't. I don't we have, can leave that one in the air. I don't have an explanation there. for it. Usually, <laughs> I'm pretty good at coming up with solutions to these problems that writers didn't give three seconds to think about. But uh, you got me there. Cartoon <laughs> apologist. <laughs> yeah, I really like the the wisecracking, the camaraderie, and the rapport between the GI Joes. I also I like how Paul put it that not a lot happened, even though it seemed like a lot of stuff happened. This episode felt like the least amount of time went by and maybe the least distance was covered, even though still a lot of things happened here. Um, I, I really like that moment when they're trying to get the meteor. That's a, that's a tense situation. They're trying to come up with these out and left field solutions for these problems, like um, putting, you know, having the uh, supersized dragonflies haul this thing up and having the net as ridiculous as, as it is having the net between the two sky strikers i like the idea of, of trying to use these vehicles in unconventional means to come up, up with an unconventional solution to the problem and uh, I, I also like the end um that little scene with scarlet and destro i think it makes scarlet seem e an even stronger character physically to be able to go one-on-one -on -one with destro and I don't think it takes anything away from Destro that he can't beat up a girl because uh, Scarlet is so much more than just a girl. She's a real force to be reckoned with. She's so, the enemy as well. Yeah, exactly. Like, 
yeah, I don't mean to be like, oh, like so hard about it, but I mean, she is the enemy. She's she's trying to catch him. He's got to protect himself as well. You know, even though what he's doing is wrong, it's just she's the enemy. He doesn't see her gender. He sees an enemy. That's right. You know, he doesn't underestimate her, which um, is uh, another good thing about that fight. It's not like he went easy on her. He's uh, he's trying his best <laughs> to stop this enemy. And it doesn't matter what gender she is and her stature or anything like that. It's he's giving his best shot and she's taking it. So that is the fourth episode in the original miniseries. We've only got one more to go, and we will be back very soon to present A Stake in the Serpent's Heart. Another really intense sounding title. <laughs> they just don't, you know, they don't make cartoons like this anymore, and they don't title cartoons like this anymore. So once again, gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me on this one, and look forward to doing the final uh, episode of the Mass Device mini series with you soon. So until next time, thanks for listening and Nerd Mistake.